So today I'm upgrading a Lenovo Think Center M93P small form factor desktop tower. And I am upgrading to a 128 gigabyte Toshiba solid state drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, a one gigabyte DDR3, um, pretty much the equivalent of a NVIDIA GeForce 210 low profile graphics card. And let's pull this out. One of these hard drives, which is a 200 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. All right, I'm gonna give a brief tour of this tower first. One thing that I did not realize about the M93P before acquiring these towers was that it has not only two uh, USB 3.0 ports on the front, it also has, let's see here, one, two, three, it also has four USB 3.0 ports on the back, which is pretty cool. We have dual uh, display ports, one VGA, uh, Ethernet, USB 2.0, uh, one D-Sub, and uh, yeah, I think that's really awesome. So it's a nice selling feature of this older but very, very usable uh, tower. So let's open it up and take a look inside. Okay, so let's open this thing up and take a look inside and we'll show you how to put everything in. Looking pretty cool. So we have a blue tab right here, and you just want to push that down, and I'm going to lift up this huge uh, caddy for the hard drive and for the uh, optical drive. So we'll start with putting the uh, solid state drive in, or actually, we'll start with putting the hard drive in. Okay, so first things first, we need to install our SATA Y power splitter. And one kind of neat thing about this uh, particular model is um, so the power is actually uh, plugged into the board here. You'll find that the SATA power actually connects directly to the board and not the power supply, which is interesting. So we'll have to test out what this thing's like uh, running different programs. I think it'll be okay though. So let's go ahead and plug our, or get our hard drive into the caddy here and plug it in. Just have to line it up correctly. Plug our SATA cable in, and right here, SATA power cable in. Luckily, there's just enough space. This is not a 90, 90 degree uh, cable. Uh, luckily, there's just enough space to tuck the cables in, it looks like. We should be okay. We'll take our extra SATA cable and plug this right directly into the motherboard. And take our solid state drive. All right, and I think we'll just leave everything hanging out for the moment. And now onto the eight gigabytes of RAM. So I think this thing can take up to 16 gigabytes. Um, and I just happen to have 
for two gigabyte sticks that I'm going to install today. Cool. Now the graphics card. And I'll just have to pause the video because I need to take off this larger bracket and install these uh, small form factor brackets. And I'll just take a moment. Actually, you know what? We'll just time lapse that. I'll show it in a... Uh, I'll just show it nice and quick. All right, so I'm gonna show you inside the case here. Let me just focus it. Hold, I'm just gonna hold it like this. So we actually have two slots, it looks like, where we can put the mother, or sorry, the um, two slots where we can put the video card into the motherboard, um, which is kind of cool. So we have different options here, depending on how big the card is. In this case, the heat sink is huge on this thing, so I think I'm going to put it right here into the bottom one. And that leaves another little uh, PCI slot right there for something else. Maybe uh, another USB. Alright. We just need to pull this tab up right here. And take out the brackets. Just two. And it's kind of hard to see this right here, but it's pretty easy to line up. Just take a look very close and make sure you're not forcing it in. All right, and a satisfying click. It's in. Okay, so I just spent way too long fidgeting around and it turns out that this bracket has the VGA um, porthole on the lower part of the bracket and this one has it on the upper part. So the ripping cable is kind of short on this card so um, luckily I have this one to save me the frustration of trying to Fit, make this one work. So, <laughs> anyway, I'll probably resume a quick little time lapse here and quickly install this one. So, that's something to look out for. If your ribbon cable for your VGA port on your video card is kind of short, you might want to look for a small form factor or a low profile uh, bracket like this if you don't have the one that it came with, which I don't. So, now that we have the graphics card fitted in, I have Windows 10 loaded up on this USB stick, and there's a Windows 7 Pro uh, product key sticker on this tower case that I'm going to use to install. So, um, yeah, first things first, let's see if uh, this thing boots up or not. Alright, so here's our first boot test. Looks like it powers on just fine. Oh, there's the Lenovo, got two beeps. And, oh, accidentally entered BIOS, but that's okay. So let's just take a quick look. I'm gonna zoom in on the screen here. So that's always a good sign that all the RAM works, the video card's working, uh, Let's go into system summary. Yeah, we got eight gigabytes of RAM. We have our uh, yeah, we have our solid state drive and we have our hard drive. Awesome. I think we're good to go. This is gonna be a fun little setup. So next step is to install Windows 10. 
All right, second boot. And let's start installing Windows 10. Just make sure everything boots up okay. Wonderful. Okay, so it's F12 to select a uh, title. For some reason, it went right to BIOS. Okay, that's no problem. I'm gonna hit F10 to save and exit. And we'll try that again. Oh, we got a little flash. It looks like it might be booting to the USB right away. All right, so exciting news. It's all working just fine. No weird noises, no weird display issues. I think what's, I think we're good to go. Okay, time to enter in the product key. Okay, as always, I'm gonna zoom in here. So, whenever I'm installing Windows for the first time, I usually access disk partition by uh, through command prompt, and to do that, at this screen, you have to hold down shift and press F10, and you type in disk part, D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T. Enter, <clears throat> list disk. And we're gonna clean both the hard drive and the solid state drive. So select disk zero, the hard drive, we'll type clean. All right, select disk one, solid state drive, and clean. Cool, very quick. So type exit leave disk partition and exit again and we'll not forget to refresh right here cool we'll select the solid state drive hit next and here we go another time lapse for the install All right, <clears throat> very nice. So we have Windows loaded up. Everything's looking really good. Um, I'm just gonna take a moment to run some updates. And yeah, then I'll download Steam and we'll try some games out and play some videos and stuff like that. And just generally test out the machine and see how well it runs. All right, so we have a beautiful looking display here now that the graphics card drivers have installed. And before I test it out with some games, I just want to demonstrate what I like to do. Um, oh, my bad. Now, we just want to get our, uh, storage drive set up here so you just have to hit the Windows key type in partition and it'll take you to disk management and you see the black part right here right click hit new simple volume click next next uh, choose your letter I'll just keep it at F and next for a quick little format And now we have our storage drive set up. Awesome. And I'll just demonstrate once what I like to do. So I'll take, a, I'll go into File Manager, and I'll go to Downloads, Documents, Pictures, Music, Videos, etc., and right-click, go to Properties, Location tab, Move, and we will select the F drive in this case, the storage drive. Right click, or well, actually, we'll hit new folder, type in downloads, 
select folder, apply, yes, and now we have downloads moved to the storage drive. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that for documents and everything else. Um, then I'm going to download Steam and we'll test out a couple games before we call this a day. Alright, so here's game number one. Uh, this is obviously not a resource heavy game, but it's still running at 60 frames per second, uh, which is good. You know, I can have a lot of fun playing this game. Alright, now I'm trying out Counter-Strike at um, pretty close to the lowest settings I can manage and um, I'm just watching somebody else or a bot play right now. Um, it's definitely not ideal. It's playable. But definitely not ideal. We're reaching pretty low frames per second. Um, Max may be hopping up to 25 here. Yeah. I would definitely only run this game at lower settings. But playable still. Anyway. And just for general web surfing, goes pretty fast. I have a good experience doing that. You can see it's pretty fast. So it's definitely pretty awesome for this. And any kind of streaming will be great because you have the HDMI, DVI, and VGA options. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. You know, that's kind of a snapshot of the kind of performance you'll get with this kind of setup. Uh, hopefully this helped you out and hopefully you learned something too. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching.